Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarolis, and I'm your host. This show is all about capturing the lives of people while they're still vibrant and active in our community. I don't know about you, but I've read too many obituaries where I've said to myself, gosh, I wish I had gotten to know that person while they were alive. Well, this show is all about doing something about that. Uh, all of our guests are very alive and vibrant and in the community, uh, living life the way you would hope one would live life. And um, it's a chance for us all to celebrate their life. I know for sure that everyone has a story to tell. And so this show is all about giving people a chance to tell their story. If you are interested in being a guest on my show, uh, please write me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Or if you have a question for one of our guests, again, so, uh, send me an email and I'll make sure they get that and respond to you. And that email again is celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Well, today I'm honored to have as my guest, Sterling Peebles. Welcome, Sterling. Oh, thank you, Gary. Great to have you on the show this morning. So, Sterling, uh, I've gotten to know you a little bit from uh, reading some of the things that you've written, uh, and you're quite a great writer. But um, why don't you take us back to when you were younger, and, and let's talk about that wonderful life that you have. Where did it all start, Sterling? It all started in 1982. I'm a person with Down syndrome, and I also have a third medical heart and lung condition. Great. And um, so you grew up in Montpelier, is that right? Yes, it is. Yep. Has that been a nice place to grow up in? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And how, how were the schools there when you were younger? They were excellent. Right. So when you think about your early life, what, and growing up with Down syndrome, what, what was the key ingredient that really made things work for you as a young person? Well, being included in school, I also went to the Early Essential Education Program, the Triple E Program. Mm -hmm. So I had first, first in Vermont, and I was lucky that I lived to my period. Mm -hmm. Before so the, feel, yeah, go on. Okay, before there was the internet and Amazon, my mom went to the Vermont State Library. Mm hmm I up here and found every book possible on Down syndrome and early childhood intervention. Resources, resources really helped. That's wonderful. Oh, yes. Wow. So your mom picked that book up, read it from cover to cover, I bet. I bet she, yes, she did. <laughs> I bet she and you could write another book right now. Uh, it, it's possible. <laughs> uh huh. So your family played an important role in your life, Sterling. Yes. Um, talk, to, talk to us about that. I have um, three siblings. I have a brother that lives in San Diego, California. And my sister, Sky, lives in Saxon River. That's two hours from here. Oh. And tell me about, and, and your mom and dad love you to pieces. Is that right? Yes, they do. <laughs> How important was that love for you as a young person? Uh, it, helped, it, it helped shape who I was and who I am. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. 
So, okay, so you, you went to triple E program, early essential education, and, um, and you were very included in all of your early classrooms and, and um, daycare. I think you mentioned daycare as well, that you always, you know, yeah. And um, so then you got into elementary school, middle school. <clears throat> how, were those, how were those years in school like? Did you have friends and things? I had friends, I had my sister, we were in the same grade, so. Okay. Yeah, now tell, tell, tell the audience about your relationship with Skye, your sister. <clears throat> well, she's also my role model and my hero, mm. and we have a very close relationship. Mm. Mm. What are the things that you really like about your sister, Sky? She's fun, she's funny, and she is a great person to be with. Oh, that's great. What well, if the Sky was to talk about you, what would she say about you? Uh, I'm funny sometimes. She's a, a well rounded person. <laughs> that's great. That's great. <clears throat> now, one thing about you that I picked up um, in the little bit I, that I was able to read is that you have a lot of determination. Yeah. Where does that Where does that come from, Starling? Let's see. How did you get that determination? Well, I did love camping as a child. Hmm. And did love adventure trips. Mm -hmm. cooking, cooking hot dogs on a common stove. Mm -hmm. And roasting <laughs> marshmallows. Oh boy. And spent hours canoeing and a family fishing small boat and kayaking. Wow. And nice. Swimming in different places like the ocean, the local pool, and at different lakes. Mm. And going to my family camp on a small lake in Western Maine. Nice. So you've had a lot of life experiences growing up. Yes. That's fantastic. So now you're in. Let's go. Let's go to high school. How was high school for you? What courses did you like? Well, let's see. In high school, I was really determined. <laughs> uh huh. How come? Because. Let's see. I wanted to prove that I didn't go to school with my friends and really wanted to be included in that school scene. Like, Of course. You wanted to be included and be a part of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And what's popular. Yep, yep. And uh, were you the mayor of Montpelier High School? Um, I used to be the class Elvis. <laughs> class Elvis? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's great so that the, you were determined that you were going to be successful in high school have yes. friends go to dances get involved in the school and make it a, a good experience yes yeah did. yeah and did it work it did fantastic i was pretty popular that kind of day that's fantastic that's great <clears throat> and now school didn't end at that point, though, did it? Well, not for me. I let's see. Well, I, I was an avid researcher and a computer junkie in high school. Okay. And I used to spend a lot of time in the library reading books about computers and technology. Wow. I always have been interested in digital and technology literacy. 
I first became a storyteller as a student in graphic communications and video technology program at the Regional Vocational Technical Center, which is now known as the Central Career Center. Wow. In graphic communications, I learned how to do graphic design using Adobe Illustrator, Quirk Express, and Adobe Photoshop. I wow. also learned about digital photography. Another thing I learned is that I studied at the technical center was filmmaking. Wow. Wow. And then years later, I did a semester long internship at Oka Media. I learned how to use and operate cameras, how to check for light balance, and how to use Final Cut Pro 10. Wow. <clears throat> you might have a show on CCTV someday. I might be available. <laughs> I have so many books on my bookshelf on filmmaking, screenwriting. Wow. Show. So that so that interest in filmmaking and media and computer research started in high school. And then you got involved at UVM as well, as well, right? Yes, I did. How did you get in how did that come about? Well, I went to well, yeah. When I was 24, I wanted to go back to college. So I went to CCV. And, uh, when I got ready, I was trying to take a class on dinosaurs or something, just a, a class. Uh -huh. I was told I, I didn't belong there. Wow. So I that, that was one roadblock I did occur. Mm-hmm. So then, so you started at CCB. Well, I also took some basic foundation classes and that helped me to be a much better writer and reader for college. Gotcha, okay. And then you went to UVM. Yes. And how was that experience? I mean, that's a, that's a pretty, that's a, a really po positive experience. That's a, and that's we're talking about a pretty uh, high academic university here. Yes. And you were able to handle that curriculum. Yep, I it was using all the college different college classes. Nothing mm -hmm. changed, but I was my so I did all the classwork all the homework. Same as everyone else. Wow. 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 That's very impressive. Um, and then you got also involved in some leadership education at the medical center? Yes, I did. What's that? Tell us a little bit about that, Sterling. Okay, so it was the use of education in neurodevelopmental and related disabilities within the program. Mm -hmm. Leadership education in neurodevelopmental and related disabilities. Wow. Yes. So I took two graduate classes. Jeez. And I got an A in both classes. Wow. I have a sense that a lot of people think very highly of you. I think so, but I'm not going to put words in people's heads. <laughs> okay. We'll let, it, we'll let that sit for, right, for a second. Um, now, it, you've, so you've done a lot for yourself, and, I, and we're getting a good picture of that through school, uh, college, You've also been an advocate for other people with disabilities. Is that correct? It is correct. 
how do you do that? And what what what's what do you say? Well, I I for for implement first, like the association of people to point implement first. Apsi. Mm -hmm. In the National Apsi, we have a Vermont Apsi chapter. Say that again, Sterling. I didn't get quite get that. Uh, they have a National Apsi, and there is a Vermont Apsi chapter. Oh, okay. So there's a national organization yes. that you work through to advocate on behalf of people with disabilities? Well, just for implement. But I also use the employment code I have mentioned in, in here someplace. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I also work for a nonprofit, I'm not sure you, called Green Mountain of Advocates. Okay, Green, Green Mountain Advocates? It was, uh, that is run by people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So I started there in 2006. Mm. And I've been advocating to them. Let's see. For that job, I've, I did some testimonies in the legislature. Really? A few months ago, I did a testimony on housing in Vermont. Mm. So you advocate for uh, decent housing for people with disabilities? Oh, different things like housing, disability rights. S Disability rights, yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Have you ever run into a situation where you were discriminated against? I have not. Okay, well that's a, that speaks well of Vermont, doesn't it? It does. Yes, uh, that's great. Uh, have you offered trainings or any workshops ever? I've done the workshops at uh, on the state level and uh, on the national level as well. Wow. Wow. Um, the workshops at the, the, the APSI conferences. Mm hmm. And I've done local workshops to my jobs. That's fantastic, Starlin. Have you ever? Uh... I know you're very humble, but uh, have you ever had any any awards given you? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, back in 2016, I was awarded the Vermont Rising Star Award for 40 under 40. Wow, that's wonderful. And let's see. In 2019, I got this national award from APSI. Cheers. And then I, in 2017, I won that Tutor World Citizenship Award for being one of the best advocates. Wow. To, um, Green Mountain Sub Advocates. Wow, that's fantastic. I, I actually know Teresa Wood. We used she's, to work together. She's really cool. She is cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And she's a, a legislator now. Yes. Yep. That's wonderful. And are, are, do you ha are you working at this point? I have two part-time jobs. Okay. Because I still work for Green Mountain Self Advocates. Right. In think College Vermont at UVM. Wow. Is it, do you actually go to, you work in Burlington when you're with that job? I do. During the pandemic, I've been working from home, but I also plan events. So I go up to plan uh, Halloween events. So okay. Halloween is my favorite holiday. <laughs> Let's see, I also am a photographer in my spare time. Oh, I've actually, I have seen your photography on Facebook a lot. Yes, I have my own photography page. Yes, you have uh, su beautiful sunsets. Um, yeah, you do a beautiful job. I'm, I, I'm very impressed. Thank you. Thank you. 
because I am also the administrator of the employment corner. I do as a volunteer job. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Is there anything that you haven't done in your life yet that you would like to do? Mm. Let's see. Like maybe go to Hollywood and make a movie or something. Or... Let's see. Well, talk to, see. talk to the. I I love to travel. Hmm. Yeah. What? Where would you like to go that you haven't been yet? Uh, hmm. I never been to. Lake Willoughby, but I just recently been there, so I can cross that off my list. Uh, New New Jersey. I said Lake Willoughby. I just I just went. I never oh. been. Okay, gotcha. Nice. Um. So um. How about some words of wisdom for the audience? What would you want them to know that you have learned in your life? Uh, people with disabilities need to believe in themselves and find opportunities to achieve what they want in life. Let them be capable and also let them find meaningful employment. Mm. Yes. No, there's a something I learned a long time ago, that there's two things in life that we all need. One is meaningful work, and the other is love. If we've got both of those things in our life, we're going to do pretty darn good. If we've got one and not the other, we can get by. And if we don't have either of those things, we're probably not doing well. So having meaningful work is a critical piece to having a good life. Absolutely. That's a good thing. Um, so anything else that you want to talk about here? I know you love to travel. I know you, you're a terrific photographer. You've got some great jobs. Want to talk more about your mom and dad? What, what roles have they played in your life? Well, they have given me awesome support throughout my life and they've been there for the last 39 years. Mm -hmm. It's fun people and we find to hang out with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're like the foundation of everything for you and then yes. let you become the woman that you are. Yes. That's fantastic. Maybe I should have them on the show at some point, huh? That's an excellent idea. Yeah, I think that would be a great idea. Um, anything else that you want to talk about this morning? Did we cover everything? Is there something we missed? Let's see. Let's, yeah. What's Sky doing these days? What's her, what's her job? What's she doing? Uh, she's a full-time parent. She's a full-time parent. Yep, that is a full-time job. <laughs> so you're an aunt. I mean, an aunt. Yes. That's fantastic. Any other questions you have for me? Um, who, you know, the, I, I don't have much, many more questions, but I, what was your favorite teacher in high school? Ooh. I had a lot of favorite teachers in high school. Oh, good. Tell, tell me about some of them. Uh, some of them. Well, they were, they helped me become more self-confident. Mm. Yep. 
there were a whole bunch of teachers that I, I really liked. So. Yeah, so, but the key takeaway is that they, they helped you become self-confident in yourself and what you'd love to do. And let me be, and it helped me belong. That's right. Cool. Help you belong is guy. That's a point. Cannot, you can't ask for anything better than that. Nope. No. Nope. So when you think about it, you've got a wonderful set of parents, a fantastic sister. You've had some great teachers who helped you become all that you want to become. You've made friends on your own out there. Got a couple of great jobs and a wonderful hobby of photography and Sounds like filmmaking is another thing you'd like you'd like to do. Um, Let's see. I, I, when I was looking at criminals and rabbits, I used to do life histories. Really? Yes. Like what I'm doing right here. Yes. Oh. But I but I did it was um, youngest of advocates. Mm hmm. In different parts of the world. Hmm. That's amazing. So maybe someday you'll take my my job here. No. <laughs> okay. Well, how, any last words you want to share with the audience, and and we we can uh, we'll close the interview. I also have a brother that lives in San Diego. Oh. What's his name? I'm Cam. 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 Yeah. All right. What does Cam do? He's a, he's a hard scientist. Wow. Batteries or something. Uh huh. Now, is uh, do you have an aunt named Giovanna Peebles? That's my mother. That's your mother. Oh, then actually, I know your mother. She's a, isn't she a uh, archaeologist? Yes. Uh huh. Well, actually, I knew your mother about 40 years ago um, when I was working for the Department of Mental Health. She helped me find a, a cemetery that had been lost. Uh, okay. Well, say hi to mom for me. I will. All right. She says hello. Oh, she's okay. <laughs> Thank you.